Monopoly by Grit. Welcome to Monopoly Season 2. We have been out of the podcast for a while. Uh, after doing the Season 1, we had an overwhelming response and people were actually asking us, why aren't you publishing any more podcasts anymore? The actual fact was we have been really, really busy, but here we are. Today we have Stuart Peck from Orbit Homes. Orbit Homes has been in the industry for nearly 45 years and a wealth of experience. And it is indeed an interesting time in the construction industry. And here we are, we have Stuart. Thanks for joining me, Stuart. My pleasure. Good to be here. <laughs> Welcome to Monopoly. Talking about Monopoly. Uh, were you playing Monopoly as a kid? Uh, yes, played it plenty of times. I don't know that we ever played it by the rules properly as they're supposed to be played, but uh, that was good fun. I had, have. <laughs> I had uh, two older brothers, so some interesting games, and I think half the time the battle was who got to use the car as their figurine around the, uh, around the board. Yeah, coincidence. Same here. Uh, <laughs> car was my favourite too. <laughs> here you go. All right, so uh, we are going to talk about uh, the secret to choosing the right builder. It's an interesting topic, uh, especially in an interesting time in the market because uh, construction industry, everyone is having doubts about builders, right? A uh, few things I want to talk about. Uh, in choosing a right builder for your property, what do you think are the factors an uh, investor or owner should consider? Um, I think it's a lot of things come back to being realistic about what your market is, what your uh, budget is and um, the realistic uh, build that you can you want to have yeah. um, versus maybe the dream. Yeah. So if um, you can drive past lots of very fancy display homes and very yeah. fancy houses that look fantastic and make you feel great by looking at them, um, but I think you have to start with what is realistic for you yeah. and then who are the builders that play in that space. Yeah. Okay. And um, we have multiple types of property builders out there, right? So there's uh, high-density builders, low-density builders, large-scale builders, medium to low. Uh, so by looking at that, what do you reckon – someone should go with, uh, with the current market? Is it a large scale builder, a branded builder? Or? Um, I think it matters what scale they are. You, you want to have um, someone that has a uh, large enough scale that you um, have potentially heard of them before. Yeah. You've got some building sites that you can drive past yeah. and have a look at. Yeah. And also probably want to have a builder that is specialising in what type of build you want to do. So. Yeah. If you've got, uh, if it's a townhouse you're after, ideally you want a builder that does quite a few townhouses yeah. as opposed to um, 95% of their work is something else, but they do yeah. dabble a little bit into yeah. into townhouses. Yeah. Um, particularly with some of the more um, medium density type projects, um, if if the builder isn't specialised in that field, yeah, that's when you can get some build times that potentially do drag out longer yeah. because it's a bit of an art form to doing some of the medium density um, type developments. Yeah. And equally, same for house and land. You want to have a builder that's that specialises in house and land and, and that is their core business. Yeah. You're right uh, because if someone wants to do a townhouse development project, then you've got to pick a builder who has the expertise as well as experience in doing just that. There's no point in going for someone who does uh, residential houses in Greenfield estates for that particular purpose, but it really depends on what the investor or the owner wants to do as well. Or it might be a luxury home you are looking at building and then it has to be a builder who has the expertise and the experience to do that. Uh, not every builder can do what you want with the bells and whistles. So uh, it really depends on what the investor or the owner wants to do. Uh, absolutely. Building. And particularly when it comes to upmarket, upmarket yeah. homes, yeah. Um, the, um, the level of finish and um, tradesmanship yeah, for a house that's of that of that scale with uh, potentially architects involved and all sorts of things. Yeah. Um, it's a very different sort of um, field. Yeah, um, than potentially um, 
uh, volume building or um, your, your sort of general house of land um, first home buyer type builds, yeah. um, the journey for the client is probably quite different as well. Yeah. I, I used to get the question from clients saying, who would be a reputable builder to go with? Yeah. So right now what I'm telling them is don't talk about the reputation. For, we are finding your builder who will complete your home. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. That's true. <laughs> because it's, uh, I mean, there's so many news on the media right now. There's builders going bust here and there. So uh, that's what matters at the end of the day, uh, where you can build an investment home or your home in, uh, with the right quality the right products as promised yeah, within the abs- timeline. Absolutely. You want a builder that's been around for um, for a period of time um, yeah. that has a, a good reputation. Um, uh, ideally, the best case to find a good builder is if you know someone or have an advocate or yeah. someone that has actually had experience with with that builder firsthand. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's probably no better um, way to get comfort than knowing someone that's done it. Correct. Um, and... Uh, like you, you definitely want someone that's been around for um, not just a couple of years. Yeah. Ideally, not someone who's just shown up and then all of a sudden they're building houses everywhere. Yeah. Um, you want to see someone that's had sort of long term sustainable correct growth. Um, not even necessarily growth, but there's plenty of great builders out there that have just stayed at the same level because yeah. they know that's what they can deliver. Yeah. Um, and they know they can deliver it well. Yeah. Um, so that's. Uh, probably ideal having a builder in that sort of space than someone that's gone doubled the size of their business in a short period of time Yeah, and seeing how builders work, not yeah. just on site, but internally yeah. in the office. Um, growing really fast can have pretty significant growing pains. Yeah. So ideally you want to see, um, yeah, long-term sustainable growth with yeah. you know, a good reputation in the market. You're right. Uh some builders boast about themselves saying we grew this much and we're moving into new offices. And I'm like, that's expenses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> new Ferrari out the front. <laughs> Especially with the right, because it's about cash flow, right? I mean, as a builder, uh, you get paid at the end. Uh, you'll be become being profitable at the end. So if you can't sustain the cash flow, you'll be gone. Yeah, soon. absolutely. And that's why um, we, you talked before about can finish your home. Yeah. Um, the way for a builder to actually make a profit off a build is to keep it moving. Correct. Um, because of the way the stage claims are set up, if yep. a builder um, moves too slowly, that's as you say, going to have a, a big drain on their uh, on their cash flow. Yeah. And potentially cause longer term problems. So yeah, um, speed is speed is a, a good a good key to a good builder. Correct. Correct. Uh, let's talk about some of the mistakes people do in uh, choosing a property builder. Any thoughts on that? Um, sometimes it, the problem might actually start before they choose the builder. Yeah. So um, uh, you might f- you might find yourself having trouble with a builder because you've chosen the wrong piece of land. Yeah. So um, sometimes uh, the, uh, one, one issue might cause you further issues down the track. So yeah. um, engaging with a builder um, or a number of builders before you've purchased land or uh, or an advocate or someone who's looking after your interests to make sure that you secure the right parcel for what yeah um, what you actually want yeah um, is very important because you do see cases out there where someone will buy a, uh, buy a block of land not quite realizing yeah. um, whether it be to do with the fall location shape yeah whatever it might be that then they start getting to builders that are stretching what the builder might normally do yeah slope for example might be an example so um where you buy a block of land you think you're going to be able to go to all these builders you've heard of before yeah but it's really pushing the limits on what they will do under their normal construction methods yeah so finding a good block of land yeah. um is is a one part of not having problems down the track correct yeah absolutely uh, because a lot of people do that mistake by going purchasing land without consulting a builder, without knowing what they're up for. And yep. then once they sign the contract, they find out the fall is too much or engineering is not right. Or Yeah, and fair, fair enough. Like a lot yeah. of people wouldn't know yeah. things like easements, what they are, yeah. um, what they mean, batters, how yeah. to read an engineering plan. Yeah. 
um, someone says, someone's selling the block of land and say, yeah, it's flat. Yeah. <laughs> but it's actually not. <laughs> um, so it's good to have someone in your corner that can actually okay. help you right from the start. Yeah. And then um, once, if you've got, assuming you've purchased the land first before you're talking to builders, yeah. if you've got the right the right piece of land, yeah. um, then it puts yourself in the best position to Correct. talk to as many builders that you wish to. Yeah. Um, to make sure that you get, you know, you've got some comparables. Um, probably don't want to have too many comparables because yeah. every you get confused. Oh uh, yeah. And every builder presents their um uh presents their offer in a different way. Yeah. Um all the paperwork's gonna look different. Um so it might be a little bit overwhelming if someone's trying to compare yeah. six builders, yeah. for example. Yeah. Um, but if, you know, if you had three, for example, that were you're comfortable with, you like what they do, you've seen them. Yeah. Um, ideally you've seen their houses under construction as yeah. well. Um, just driving around. Yeah. Um, that probably puts you in a good space to make a educated decision. Yeah. And you know, the the um some of the things that might be on the paperwork of one builder might trigger you to ask the question of another builder yeah. just to clarify, oh, they've got this. Do you? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's good to have a, a few options. And also another thing I've seen some people do is they go past the display house and they make a judgment on the builder by looking at the display house. Yeah. So what you got to understand is display house is every builder will be showcasing their best product. Yeah. So that doesn't mean that that's the house you're going to get. It really means your house will have what you have in black and white on your contract. That's right. A lot of people forget that. Uh, absolutely. And if you drive through any of the um, display villages that you'll see out there yeah, and then drive a few streets back where the houses are actually getting built, yeah. you'll notice there's a significant difference in, yeah. in how they, um, how they look. And that's just budget. Yeah. That's the, the it's not because um, the builders are presenting something um, that you can't have. Yeah. It's just that those display homes, as they're presented, are going to yeah. be at the top end or yeah. in excess of people's budgets. Yeah. And that's why when you drive through the estate and have a look at the houses that are just getting handed over, yeah, they're not all going to look like display yeah. homes. Yeah. Um, and that's just budget. And that's, I think, we you talk about um, mistakes that some people make. I think um, starting with what a display home looks like and then trying to pair it back yeah. to your budget. Yeah is probably the wrong way to go. Um, you should be starting with your land and floor plan. Yeah. That works for you. Yeah. And then work out how much money you've got left. Yeah. To put in the upgrades that make Correct. it feel like a home. Yeah. As the things that are particular to your family's needs. Yeah. Um, and build from there rather than try to build down because that might be a disappointing process for for people. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And also another mistake I have seen is not reading the contract, especially on the specifications, which we have agreed well. If it's not on the contract, it's not going to be there. That's correct. Uh, it's simple as that. So as an owner, as an investor, just you got to make sure everything is in black and white uh, so that you can go back to the builder if there's an issue. Otherwise, there's no point in crying about it at the end. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that contract that the client signs, yeah. that same contract is used for the builder to actually construct that home. That's, yeah. the, that's the paperwork that the drafty yeah. um, estimator everyone's going to look at. Yeah. And that's essentially what you will get. So um, it'll generally start with a list of specifications that are standard inclusions. Yeah. And then outline all the things that um, are in addition to those standard inclusions. So, yeah. um, uh, and that'll vary depending on the client, how, my, how many upgrades in particular they do, if they make some. Um, structural changes and all those type of things. Yeah, um, but you're right. It's it start with the start with the standard specifications because then you know your starting point. Making sure that all the things that you think you're getting upgraded in the house are clearly written there. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, read read the contract. The contracts are generally, um, you know, most builders are using like a HIA or an MBA contract, which is, um, yeah. Tens of thousands of those are used yeah. every year. Um, but there will just be a few sections that will be specifically done the way the builder likes to do it to, to uh, articulate what's in the build yeah, uh, or any sort of terms of the build. 
So um, most of the contract is just your general contract, but there'll be, you know, a few documents within there that are the ones you really want to make sure, specifications, upgrades, all that type of thing that yeah. you that it is as you expect it to be. Yeah. And what are the red flags as an owner or investor? Uh, what red flags do you think pe- people can point to? Okay, okay, here's a red flag. I got to be watchful. Uh, what can we tell an uh, investor or owner uh, of a red flag of a builder right now? Um, well, a lot can come down to the salesperson you're dealing yeah. with as well. So not just the not just the builder generally, but you yeah. you would want to be talking to whether it's a um, the builder directly or via an advocate, however it works. Um, you want someone that's going to be starting with, okay, what's your, what's your budget? What do you need? Yeah. Um, and ideally, depending on what the client needs, finance. Yeah. So that should always be the starting point yeah. of a conversation, not um, not all the aspirational yeah. type things because yeah. there's no point talking about um a big double story if it doesn't fit yeah. on your block of land that you've already purchased. Correct. Or your budget doesn't work that way. So, you know, most of the time it'll start with, okay, what sort of, what's your budget starting with? Where do you want to be? Okay, so if that's what you're after, this is probably the size of block you'll be able to get in that area. Yeah. Uh, maybe p- present some alternative solutions where maybe you can get a bigger block of land for what you're after. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people come in to, um, to, build or invest for the first time and um, they've got, like, they don't know and there's a good reason why they don't know if yeah. what what a build costs, what yeah. land costs, what you can fit on there. Yeah. Um, so red flag would be not talking about that first. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It's about the questions you ask the builder, the questions you get asked from the builder and then the body language of the salespeople. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that'll give you a pretty good indication yeah 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 but um and you know i think you i mentioned before about seeing houses under construction so you want to see progress if you're driving around if you've been thinking about this for a while driving through some new estates and you notice some builders there that are building you want to see progress on their sites yeah you don't want to see gray gray timber and yeah. um things flapping around like it's yeah. no one's been to that site for yeah. four weeks that type of thing so you, you want to see progress. Um, you ideally want to see some good reviews. Yeah. Um, reviews are a funny one because anyone can write a bad review. Yeah. So my advice to, would be uh, people is look at the look at general scores, for example, versus peers as opposed yeah. to um, looking at that one negative review because they will always be there. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, building a house are very passionate, emotional yeah thing for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, look at things like product review. Have a yeah. look at people's scores, how yeah. they go. Um, they'll get broken down into pre-site, on-site, yeah. um, different type of scores. Um, talk to people if you know if uh, you know trades that work in the industry. Yeah. Particularly trades, trades are um, uh, different trades see the build at different stages. But if you, for example, knew someone that was more of a finishing trade that sees houses. Yeah. Towards the end, yeah, um, and they, you know, they might have some people. They say these guys great, just yeah, you, that'd be a good option. Oh, they for might you. say stay away from them. We never got paid. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, yes, you yeah. wouldn't want that. You wouldn't yeah. want that. But uh, yeah. no, that's what you got to keep paying everyone regularly, so your builds keep moving. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But uh, you mentioned a very important point. Uh, having a look at this other other sites which is under construction of the same builder. To make sure there is progress every yep. week, every month. If there's no progress, there's issue somewhere. Potentially, yeah, potentially, yeah. yeah. So it's always good to see houses go up quick. And um, if it's a new stage, for example, um, and you get a lot of builders all starting at the same time, but they're starting to get towards the end of construction, you'll see you know, builders which are um, might have started at the same time. Some are about to hand over houses. Yeah, some might be halfway through. So um, it's, it's always there can be exceptions and stories behind some of that. Yeah, but generally speaking, it's a it's a good guide to see. Okay, these guys build pretty quick. Yeah, and I was talking about some questions to ask the builder. Questions you get asked from the builder. Uh, what would be some questions 
for an owner or an investor to ask a builder before they proceed. Uh, I mean, things like how many days do I have on the contract for the completion of the build so that you know this is my completion and what happens next? What yeah. if you don't complete it? What's the penalty? Anything else you can think of? Um, I'll, I mean, fixed price yeah. is a is a um, a, is a big topic at the moment. Um, and uh, generally speaking, it, it it's protecting the consumer a lot yeah. more than it is the builder. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the builders that have had trouble have had um, fixed price contracts that were signed a long time ago. Yeah. Um, and a bit of a perfect storm yeah. between um, cost escalation. Yeah. Um, home builder coming yeah. in, which made getting trades harder. Okay. So, um, but the fixed price element of the contract is is one of the most important things for the for the customer to understand. Yeah. Um, ideally, it's reasonably black and white in terms of what that period is. Yeah. Um, it's probably less of a factor if someone's got title land. Yeah. Um, but it's a, it's a very important for someone that has got a block of land that maybe isn't going to title for another um, six, 12 months to understand how long have I got before my build needs to start for this price to um, still be the same. Yeah. And if it does delay further than that, then what happens? Yeah. So ideally you want to see in your contract that that side of thing is pretty clear. Yeah. Um, not ambiguous or sort of open-ended yeah um because that's that's one of the most important parts of the contract in addition to what we spoke about before that the yeah. things you expect in there are yeah. are actually written in there because exactly because you don't want to um uh someone tell you like a salesperson say uh yeah that should be fine or yeah. we can look at that later or yeah. anything like that if it's not in that contract yeah then it's not going to be in your build that's right yeah yeah, uh, ambiguity. You need to clear out the ambiguity. Uh, if it's fixed price, until when? Yeah. And what happens after that? So that I mean, as long as the client knows what happens after that, yeah. they are mentally prepared for it. Yeah. So it it's good for both parties. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, what things do you do to check the quality? Of the build in a, in a typical scenario at the handover, what sort of quality checks do you go as a builder to make sure the quality the control is done properly? Yeah, so there'll be different stages throughout the build where the yep. client um, will um, meet the supervisor on site to go through um, that stage of the build and where everything's at, an opportunity for them to ask questions. It probably does, as you say, get more important as you get towards the end of the build. Yeah. Um, uh, some people will have a private inspector that they engage themselves, um, but generally speaking, there'll be um, uh, the, before the client sees the essentially the final home almost yeah. almost finished. Yeah. Um, uh, in our case, so the, the supervisor and construction manager will go out and do a full QA of the home. Yeah. Identify anything that is um, is needs to be rectified at all. Um, and then they will um, book in the client for them to come back after most of those things have been completed. There'll be a few things that maybe won't, so like a paint touch-up, for example, they'll probably wait to show the client through the home in case the client says, oh, what about that? And rather than getting a painter to come back to do some touch-ups twice, that might that might be in that sort of final week before handover. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so QA inspection, then the client comes through for their inspection. Yeah. Um, gives anything that they're not happy with, um, most things will be addressed. Like the, there might be times where the client's um, expectation, for example, um, the, just because a client has said, I'm not happy with that or can we fix this or whatever, uh, the builder's obviously obligated to fix what uh, as far as um, the quality of the build they need to deliver is there. Yeah. Um, but they also the builder still has the chance to say no yeah. that is acceptable yeah so um but 95% of items builder say yep we'll fix that yeah. and then hand over all those little tiny little bits are, uh, are fixed up get a set of keys in a brand new home and get a little gift pack and that's right <laughs> um and from from our case yeah the, the feedback's always always very good yeah and uh, we were talking about getting references from uh, people who have already done it with those builders. 
uh, that's very important. And because that's firsthand experience from someone who has already done it, built with the builder. What can be some of the questions we can ask uh, or the owner or investor could ask the other person or the reference about the builder? Yeah. Um, One would well, be how long did it take to build? Absolutely. Yeah. How long did it take? Um, what was the customer service like throughout? Yeah. Because the, the, the client's going to deal with multiple people. Yeah. Um, so the salesperson um, is obviously heavily involved in the first part. Yeah. And then um, you'll have pre-site operations, on-site operations, supervisors. Yeah. Um, so there'll be a lot of people to deal with. So what was the customer service like? What was the journey like? Yeah. Um, ultimately, hey, were you happy with how it went and you're happy with how it how it finished? Yeah. Um, and with construction's not a perfect science. So there's going to be some bumps along the road yeah. in any build and you're still relying on tradesmen yeah. um, doing their thing and showing up when they say they're going to show up and all yeah. those type of things. So there's no such thing as a perfect um, a perfect build or, um, uh, you know, there's going to be a few little bits and pieces, but ultimately it's about how does the builder um, communicate that, how effectively do they keep the build moving yeah, um, and give you comfort that, um, you know, the, the house you're going to get and the house that you do get is, um, is what you're after and makes you feel good when you bring your friends over and That's right. show them your new house. And uh, it's it's about it's not about the sales pitch. It's about the customer service after sales service because everybody makes mistakes, and it's about how you fix those mistakes, and how quickly you can fix those. And that's that's what matters at the end. Definitely, definitely. And I, I haven't worked in um, for uh, for a builder. I've worked in um, building products for a long time. Yeah. And then for the last sort of eight years, been working uh, for builders and working selling to builders and seeing what actually happens inside. Right. It's a bit of an eye opener because. There's just so many moving parts. Yeah. When you think about um, the just the number of items that need to be ticked off, the amount of per, uh, purchase orders, the amount of trades, yeah, the amount of uh, separate activities that have to happen on site to get that house finished, yeah. Um, and it's uh, it's it's full on. So it's uh, as you say, it's not always going to go from start to finish exactly as planned. Yeah. Um, but hopefully as close to as planned as possible. And also, Stuart, uh, Orbit Homes has been in the industry for nearly 45 years, right? And uh, I, I understand you were not with the business for that long. but <laughs> I, was, I was actually born, <laughs> I was born the year they started. So, <laughs> uh, What do you hear from the owners of the ride they have had? Have they had similar situations in that 45-year period? Uh, to today, you mean? Yeah. Um, oh, I don't know if they've had any. I don't think anyone's had similar to what's um, what's happened over right this period. But um, the the beauty about the um, so we got three directors at Orbit Homes. Yeah. Two of them are the, the founding brothers, but yep. they're in the office every day. They're not. Um, they're not sort of just checked out and hoping to get some checks at the end of the month. Um, they're they're very much involved. Yeah. Um, open door so like if i've got a question let's walk five meters down the hallway and yeah. get an answer um so they're they're very involved they're passionate about the business yeah um and that's why they are there is because they've got pride behind the the products yeah. product we deliver um so yeah it's it's been tough times but they've done a great job of um focusing on um what what we are good at what is our core business which yeah. is which is um, detached houses in yeah. greenfield estates, essentially. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and the business has done townhouses in the past and done bits and pieces, but ultimately um, now just just focus on what are we what are we really good at? What what do we yeah. know we can deliver um, consistently? Yeah. And what's uh, scale of the business that we know yeah. int- internally we can um, we can get these jobs out onto site. Yeah. Um, in a consistent manner with with good service. Final question for today. Yes. Uh, with all this noise going on, why would still someone consider building? <laughs> uh, ultimately, um, because it's it's an opportunity to get something that you've created. So um, it's a 
you can obviously you can buy existing houses and you can buy uh, existing apartments and whatever it might be. But I think someone that gets to um, start the process from the very start, make all the decisions about what suits suits them, and from yep. an investor as well, um, what are we what are we trying to get out of this investment? Um, what do we need by the way of returns? Yeah. Um, and uh, you, you get to choose you know, where you are as far as infrastructure and all that type of thing and timing when you want to actually start your investment. But for an owner-occupier, um, there's no other way besides buying a house and renovating it that to your exact standards. But even still then, that floor plan is not going to be yeah. exactly what you or your family yeah. want. Um, so it's the best way to go, well, um, we can whether it's their whether it's their final dream home or it's their first home. Yeah. It's still something with their their fingerprint yeah. on it that they've yeah. um as much as they might not have built it themselves, yeah. They've still created it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh if it's your family home, it's um there's a lot of emotion attached to it and a lot of people want something unique for themselves because that's where they're gonna spend their time. And you can't get that from an established home because there will be something wrong for the husband or the wife or the kids where if you build build it, you can do whatever you want. Uh, that's one. And then for an investor's point of view, well, brand new homes will give you the best return in terms of depreciation and things like that, the tax benefits. So there's whole whole sort of benefits to it. Um, all in all, uh, interesting times, but uh, I'm sure things will ease out in 2024 <laughs> and things will be back to normal. But uh, thanks for joining me, Stuart. My pleasure. Happy to be here. There you go. Uh, season two, episode one. Uh, interesting topic, construction industry with Stuart Peck. I'll see you on the next episodes of Monopoly. Monopoly.